Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Each One, Reach One, hoping to teach and to reach one, Lord willing. Thank you for joining me today. We are keeping it rolling in our series of uh, prophecies and promises. Let us give all praise, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and to our Heavenly King, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Thank you for joining me today, saints and Gentiles. I appreciate your time. Um, again, if you've been watching this series, you know the disclaimer by now. You should have it memorized, all right? And so keep that in mind as we get into the lesson. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's because you're new here, in which case you should stop watching this video, go into the playlist, and start from video number one in this series and work your way up to this one. All right, that is what I suggest you do. That makes the most sense. That will help you um, to develop a well-rounded understanding and knowledge of the prophecies and promises of the Most High God given to the Israelites in the time of the Old Testament. All right, so that you can also understand the prophecies referred to and the promises spoken of in the New Testament. All right. It'll do you a world of good. It, it, it just may save your life. All right. Knowing. No, knowing uh, what, I, well, what, what I mean to say is not knowing is not going to save you because ignorance is not bliss. All right. Ignorance is not bliss. So you may want to resist your instinct to stick your head in the sand like an ostrich in hopes that, hey, if you don't hear and you don't see, then you can say that you didn't know in the day of judgment. Oh, but you will be punished for having an opportunity to hear the word and to see the truth and for turning your back on it. So I suggest you get comfortable with the idea of being uncomfortable. All right, because a little discomfort right now is a lot better than an eternity of discomfort in that lake of fire. Know what I mean? All right, so with that said, let's get to it. We are starting in Isaiah chapter 66. We're going to scroll down and we're going to pick up at verse 10. You see the subject? Joy in Jerusalem's future. You can call this a commandment from God, a commandment. This is something he's telling you to do, to joy in Jerusalem's future, not to dance on, on, their, on their rejection, not to dance on them being forsaken for a time, not to dance on their punishment. No. Rejoice in Jerusalem's future. Yes, they were punished for a time. Yes, they had been forsaken for a time. Yes, they were outcast for a time. But you're not to dance on their graves because they will one day come out of those graves and they will become the saviors of all the earth. And those of you who danced on the graves of the Negroes, <clears throat> the Israelites, will indeed pay for that one day. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, not in Jerusalem stead, right? You notice that? There is no commandment here to rejoice in Jerusalem stead, to boast yourselves of being their replacement, right? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem. There is no rejoicing unless you're rejoicing with Jerusalem because there is no blessing outside of them. You do not get blessed by them being cast out. So it doesn't benefit you to wish that they are cast out. You are benefited. You are blessed by them being blessed and lifted up. That's how it happens for you. This is the way the Most High God set it up so that you would indeed root for his people because you have something to gain. You have a stake in their glorification. There is no benefit to you. There's no blessing to you without there being a blessing unto them first. 
This is the Most High God's design, all right? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for her, uh, rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. So there's a few things you're supposed to understand here, all right? You're supposed to rejoice with Jerusalem, not against Jerusalem. You're supposed to be glad with Jerusalem, right? All ye that love her, that's key. You're supposed to love his people because he loves his people. And you can't treat them the way you think, you know, you, sh you should be able to treat them because of their position in the world and in life right now. Yes, they are lowly. Yes, you know, they're not perfect. Yes, there is a lot that's going on with them right now in the earth that leaves much to be desired. It doesn't matter because these are still his children. Still, many of them are the bride of Christ. Still, many of them will become your saviors. So you have to rejoice and be glad with her. Rejoice with her, all ye that mourn for her. Because those that truly love God and truly love his people, they will be mourning for his people. And you see them. There are many whose hearts go out to the black people. Many Gentiles actually love our people. And you'll, you'll, you'll start a fight if you say that among certain Israelite circles because, and I get it, many of our people, you know, they, they awaken angry. They come out of their slumber cranky, angry, because of everything that they've that uh that our enemies have done unto us and it does it makes you angry oppression makes a wise man mad right this is the truth per the scripture and it's natural for an oppressed people to be angry and to hate the people that oppress them right now i see all over social media people are talking about palestine and you know people are um empathizing and sympathizing with Israel, I'm mean, sorry, with uh, Palestine and saying, you know, well, it's natural for, for the Palestinians to hate, you know, the Israelis. I mean, look what they've done to them. Anybody would hate the people who did them that way. But then the same people ha have no ability to empathize with the Negroes and understand why Black people would, would hate white people. They can't understand. And now, see, I'm one of those who understands the, the totality and the history. So, you know, I I was mad at a lot of people, you know, the Europeans, um, the Arabs, because I, I know all about the Arab slave trade. See, and I know that our people went into a worldwide slavery. So I know that people all over the earth, black and white, took part in the slavery of the Negro Israelites. All right. I know this. And so I don't just talk about white folks when I'm talking about oppression and slavery. I'm talking about all the nations because Israelites went into a worldwide slavery. Okay? And many people are mourning. There are many Gentiles that are mourning with the Negroes. They're mourning for my people. And now, due to the awakening, the great awakening that's happened, happening. There are many Gentiles that are awakening and they're realizing who the Israelites are. And now they see our joy in our awakening and they're starting to rejoice with us and for us. This is what they were commanded to do. And they're doing it naturally. I don't even know if they know about the, this particular scripture, but they're doing it. They're making videos and they're trying to help spread the word and trying to help wake up the Israelites to their own situation. That's righteousness to the Most High God. These are people who have under, who understands what's going on, and they put their own pride to the side and says, "These are God's people, and what I better do is love them. What I better do is try to help open these people's eyes and and help wake them up and help them understand who they are, because my blessings, what happens to me, is tied to what happens to them." And if I do right by them, I will receive leniency when they are lifted up. This is why it's important to know who the Israelites are. It's important to know this book properly. 
because not knowing will kill you. All right. So rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. Why? So that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. See, because you will get to enjoy some benefits of the Israelites being glorified, of the Israelites being abundantly blessed by God if you love his people. Because there are levels to captivity, right? Like think about slavery. There are some slaves who were field slaves and they had hard slavery, right? Hardcore bondage and, you know, sweating it out in the sun all the day long. And then there are those who we call the, the house Negroes, right? They had a bit easier time of it. They weren't out there in the sun. They weren't out there getting, getting you know, the worst of it. They were treated a little bit better than those in the field. And it's, it will be the same when captivity comes upon other nations. There will be levels. And if you can do anything about controlling, you know, what level you land on, the smart thing for you to do is to do that. So the smart thing for you to do is to do everything that you can to figure out what you are supposed to be doing according to the Bible, not according to what Christianity tells you. Christianity is hiding things from you so that you can partake in the lake of fire with Satan. You better run far and fast. Because as a Gentile, you do not get to inherit the kingdom. You, don't, you do not get to replace the children of the kingdom. The only blessings and the only good things that that you get they will come as a result of the israelites it will come from them right that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breast of her consolations that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory for thus saith the lord behold i will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the gentiles like a flowing stream then shall ye suck. Ye shall be born upon her sides and be dandled upon her knees. This is to the Gentiles, right? After the Most High extends peace to the Israelites like a river and the glory of the Gentiles, meaning all of their stuff, their homes, their riches, everything that, that, uh, that they prospered, everything that they gathered, all their riches, everything is going to be given like a flowing stream unto the Israelites. Then shall ye suck. Ye shall be born upon her sides and be downed upon her knees. Now, just visualize a woman, you know, holding a baby on her lap, you know, breastfeeding and then, you know, playing with the baby and having the baby up upon her knee and carrying the baby on her hip. This is the imagery you're supposed to get with the, with the Israelites and the other nations. You, you other nations, you Gentiles will be like the babies the Israelites are carrying around on the, on the hip. That's that's what it's going to be like. Not the other way around. As one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. He's talking about those that love his people. There is a different level of captivity for those that actually love his people. For those who rejoice with his people and for those that mourn for his people, there is a different judgment for you this is important you will be comforted in jerusalem not in replace of or in the stead of you will be comforted by the israelites you will be basically babied and cared for by the Israelites because you're going to have to be because the same way the Israelites had to be baby basically and taken care of by our oppressors so shall you be when the Israelites are lifted up you're going to need the Israelites for everything you're not going to be able to eat without the Israelites you're going to have no clothes without the Israelites nowhere to sleep no land no nothing but hard times without the Israelites. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice. So he's telling you Gentiles that 
when you see this, when this happens, your heart is going to rejoice because you people who fit this group, you're going to, you're going to, you love the people so much that you're going to be happy for the Israelites, for the Negroes to get their turn on top, for them to no longer be on the bottom, being stepped on, having their, their, their necks crushed under the foot of the oppressor. No more. Those days will be over and your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like an herb and the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. You see this? There are levels. There's differences. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. I often see people who try to explain the Bible and they try to tell you that, you know, when you're reading the book and 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 it's talking about how the most high, how Christ is going to come with fire and and uh render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire, that it doesn't really mean what you what it says it means. It doesn't really mean what it sounds like because they're still picturing Christ like, you know, like he was when he came the first time. He's not coming back that same way. Read the scriptures. He's coming back with a vengeance. Don't let these people convince you that he's a cuddly teddy bear and he's going to be coming back to love on everybody. He, that's not the case. He's coming back to wreak havoc and vengeance on his enemies, on the people who hated his people, his chosen, his family. His family, he cares about his family. Picture a big brother who's been sitting back forever watching his younger brothers and sisters be beat up and picked on, stomped on, killed, and have every manner of evil done to them. And he had to sit back and just watch and wait. What do you think he's coming back to do? What do you, what, what do you think is in his heart? How do you think he feels? You think he can't wait to come back and love on everybody after having had to watch this? All this time, patiently. Oh no, that's why it says he's coming back to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire because he is irate about the state of things, about what has happened to his people. And he's coming to do something about it. Verse 16, for by fire and by his sword, Will the Lord plead with all flesh? Yikes. Listen, listen to this part. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So again, if the slain of the Lord shall be many, and if the Christian church would would be the large, you know, being the largest religion on earth, making them one of the broad gates that leadeth unto destruction. Do the math. The majority of Christians will be among the slain of the Lord. That simple math, simple math. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, swine's meaning, this is not referring to the actual pig, it's, it's referring to a type of person, a type of man, a type of man, okay? Eating swine's flesh, and this is similar to the statement when Christ says, eat my flesh and drink my blood, meaning eat, you know, consume what he's taught, consume his word. So this man, who is who's uh, he is compared to to a pig to swine? His teaching, his doctrine, his wisdom that people would be learning and eating, ingesting the swine's wisdom and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together. Anybody following and a lot of you Christian pastors are the swines, or are the swine. You know, and you Christians are eating swine's flesh without knowing it. You're eating the abomination and the mouse 
and you shall be consumed together, you and the pig, your, your, your pastor, your wicked shepherd. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to, to Tarshish, Pool, Lud, that draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren, Israel, for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. That's how you know that this is talking about the Israelites because he's talking about the offerings. He compared them to the offerings that are brought in the clean vessels. And I will also take of them, the Israelites, for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. He's talking to Israel. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Because at this time, all of the world is going to know. And they're going to come to his people, to Israel, to worship before him. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be an abhorrent to all flesh. See, I often wonder and believe, I've come, I'm coming to believe that, you know, that lake of fire, that place where these people are, that the righteous are going to be able to see that place. They're going to be able to look and see that place and see the torments of these other people. And those in that place will be able to look and see the blessings of the righteous, the life that they're living and see that there were rewards for righteous living that they didn't partake in, right? So again, again, that's my belief and my understanding of how it's going to be. And, you know, I really wouldn't want to be one of those people who are cast into the lake of fire. I just wouldn't. I would be trying to do everything that I can do right now to not be one of those people. So even if I was a Gentile and I didn't 100% buy the idea of these Negroes being the Israelites, even if I didn't 100% believe that, you know, one, I would be in the dark still if I didn't believe it. But let's just say I didn't believe it. I would like to think that I would be smart enough to say, you know what? Just in case I'm wrong, let me let me do better. Let me let me do right by these people just in case I'm wrong. Because if I'm if I'm wrong and they are the people, I'd rather do right by them and 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 reap the benefits. And if I'm and if they if if it's not true that they are the people. What did I really lose by doing right by them? You see what I'm saying? What did I lose by being a good person, a better person? So there's no reason not to do right by the Negroes. No reason not to, except you're just wicked and filled with the spirit of Satan. That's it. You're unwise, not smart enough to play the, hey, you know what, just in case game you know what i mean but 
that's all that's all due to the most high because he knows the hearts of men and he's not going to let those that really hate his people he's not going to let you fake it to make it there's no such thing as the fake it to make it with the most high god he knows your heart and so he's not going to allow you to pretend that those that are unrighteous be unrighteous still keep that same energy he says make the heart of his people fat uh give them eyes that they cannot see ears that they cannot hear and hearts that they cannot understand so that they shall not convert and i should heal them he doesn't want to do it many people will be left in the dark so that they can be made worthy for the judgment to come yikes so with all that said isaiah chapter 66 we got verse 10 through 24 right joy in jerusalem's future filled with promises a commandment, assurances, a prophecy not to be thrown away. Read it, heed it. A, pro a promise made is a promise kept by the Most High God. All praise, honor, and glory to Abba Yahweh and to our King, Yahweh Shai. Again, Grace and peace to the saints and to the Gentile believers. I pray that you guys get it together. Those of you who the Most High God considers the righteous of the Gentiles. Because if he wants you to receive lighter strokes, I want you to receive lighter strokes. Because there's going to be many of your people who's going to get the smackdown laid on them. Oh boy, you ain't going to want to be them. Trust me. You don't want to be one of those who have to be born through their bloodline either. You don't want to be the children of them because you will be what they are. Meaning if they are slaves, you will be born a slave the same way our people were. Right? And you don't want to be the children of the wicked of the extremely wicked. I mean, because I mean, you are the children of the wicked, but you don't want to be the children of the extremely wicked. Remember, levels, right? So again, with that said, you guys take this word, consume it, eat it, and be enriched by it. Until the next time, Lord willing, Shalom.